Only fans with a PH, you heard? <laughs> Yo. X. L. Fans up in the building, rep the gear from toe to ceiling. 305 stays on the brim, by 95 we popping wheelies. On the way out to the rock, time to see the trio fly. OBJ, Tyreek and Waddle, speed and swag solidifies. Two was bad, be in the pocket, got my coordinating With the Weaver operating, on the sideline for me late and strategizing for that dub. Let's get A-Train on the track. Chubbs and Rab, G Phillips, healthy boy, we bout to crack some facts. Time to change the narrative, F off with all due respect. Criticism at its finest, break the cycle down the stretch. Top dog off in the league, let's keep it going postseason. Bring that heat and cold weather. That's a day county reason. Only fans. Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Soso, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for joining us. As always, make sure you're hitting that like, comment, and subscribe button. And most importantly, turn on those notifications. That way, you guys get notified when we drop hits like this. This week, we're bringing you another episode of Only Fans, the preview. We got the Titans on Monday Night Football, and I couldn't think of a better person to bring on the show to talk Titans football than my brother from another mother, Julio Garcia, lifelong Titans fan. What's going on, my bro? What's up? What's up, my man? Glad to be here. Popping my podcast, Cherry, with Sports with Soso. Yeah, man. Got to have the fam on here, dog, if we're going to talk Titans football, yeah. right? I yeah. think I somebody else, dog, but I was I like, I why go anywhere else? I hope we have another miracle under our belt like we did last year. Well, shit, man. You know, you talk about a miracle, and, and that last game that we had was a Thursday night football game, right? Um, Which was crazy. It was just a yeah. crazy game, right? Because, yeah. like, we went up early, and then and obviously big you too. Big, dude. And and everybody assumed that the game was pretty much over, but, like, you know, Levy's dog and, and Henry and, and the squad, you know what I'm saying? They pulled it out and, and it had a tremendo fourth quarter comeback. Uh, how did that game make you feel, dog, right? Like, obviously going through that emotion of the beginning of the game and then the end of the game. Bro, I was, I'm always excited when the Dolphins play the Titans, and I'm always expecting a win. And when we started getting molly whopped, I was – to be honest with you, bro, I gave up on them. Two minutes left, we were down 14. I was like, I went to night. I went night-night. I went to sleep. It was over. I woke up 1 a.m., checked the score, saw we won by one. I was like, holy crap, bro. Can't believe it. I can't believe I missed it. I'm disappointed. So I'm making up this year and I'm going, I'm actually going to the game. Not yes, going to miss it. Yes, sir, man. Um, look, we got to be honest, right? The, the Titans have a real shot, right? And if we break down um, the ins and outs of this game, we're both struggling with quarterback issues, right? Uh, on your end, your, full, like, your quarterback issues has been more on real levels being more inconsistent, right? And really killing drives with bad interceptions, terrible decisions. <laughs> You know what I mean? And, and just doing it that way. On our side, we have a lot of questions because Tua is out, right? And we don't know who's going to step up um, to, to kind of take his place for, for this big game, a, a must-win game, right, for, for both teams. And McDaniel came out and said, oh, he's not naming a starter until Monday. And I'm like, I don't know if that's tactics or if that's just him not being has, sure. What do you think? It has to be tactics, bro. It has to be. And I think right? you guys are going to go with Hundley. I think Hundley gives you your best shot. What do you guys think? Honest. What do you what do you think Huntley brings that makes it hard for for teams to get ready for him? I think his mobility. I think he he could run around. He could extend plays, and just like Malik Willis diced us up last week. You guys take a page out of the Packers book that they did to us last week. I think you guys have a real shot. And he's and, been there before, right? I think like, so. I think not, he. I, I think he did good with the Ravens a couple years back, covering for Lamar. I think he led. Yeah. I think he won a couple games. Yeah, he did, bro. And he took him, you know, he had him on a run, made a Pro Bowl that year, and, and he showed his abilities, right, to maybe he's not your long-term starter or, like, your franchise quarterback, but if you're in a stretch where you need somebody to win you two to three games in a five-game stretch, in a five-week period, he may be able to do that. And that's exactly what the Dolphins are looking yeah, for. I agree. Um, you know, I wanted to bring this up because I, when I was doing a little bit of research, you know, this shit really caught my eye. Um you know, we're, the Titans, they're, they're three and two in the, against the Dolphins in the last five games, right? You guys have won the last two games at that. Um, historically, it's always been close, but the Titans have had the edge. Is that what kind of like, it, you know, in Tennessee's mind saying, you know what, these guys, regardless if they were full health or not, like we know that we can beat them and we know that we can hang with them. I mean, I have, I have, I put a lot of confidence in my defense this year, but I don't know if two, if you had two of that playing, hitting on all cylinders, I don't know if we could beat you. I don't. I don't think our quarterback plays is consistent mm. enough. And he's something gonna about his, 
Go ahead. What I've been what I've been saying recently is Levis is guaranteed to give the defense six points right now, in my in my book. <laughs> For so, a team that's struggling to score points, that shit's gonna yeah. be handy, right? Yeah, exactly. But, you know what's weird, bro, is that you know the two things, right? On, on the Dolphin side, we haven't led at all at this point at any point in the game this season, right? That's wild. Um, that's crazy, right? Because yeah, you, you would think that this this team was built to at least have some type of a lead or at least score some points. And we're ranking in the bottom of the NFL when it comes to that as well. And then I look at the flip side and, you know, Levis is second in the NFL with INT, right? He has five. Um, obviously, a turnover is a big issue. But I think, <laughs> excuse me. I think that, thanks. I think that, that that's like what's the evening factor, right? Like none of these teams have really shown that either whichever quarterback can show up this, this Monday, right, is going to be able to do something worthwhile consistently for the whole game. You know, I, I personally think it's going to be a battle of the running game. I don't know about you. I think I think your defense is good, bro. I think the the Dolphins defense showed up against the Seahawks. You guys just couldn't put up points. You guys Didn't had a real know. shot there. You guys Didn't allowed 17 because- early points. And, oh, yeah, I, I, I've been betting, and I took the, the spread in the second half, and the Seahawks did not score a point until a garbage drive late in the fourth. I get that. I was sweating like, that we, out. But here's the thing with me and the defense, right? Yeah, they've been good in the second half, but at that point, either the game is out of control, right, and the and the offense is already turning into vanilla on the other side, or yeah, or, or we're playing a, a team that doesn't necessarily have the offensive capabilities to keep it up, right? You mentioned Seattle. Um, yeah, they scored, they scored on us, but they also drove the ball on us a lot. I agree. They did, they, but they just they couldn't. They couldn't capitalize in the second half, in my from No, not from only that, was. dog. Like not not only that, dog, but that shit takes a toll on the defense, right? When you're get when you're out there on an eight minute drive, right? Yeah, they yeah. You, you know, you forced a punt, right? But you were out there for eight, ten, twelve minutes. You know what I mean? Like that yeah, shit feels drains you, yeah, for sure. And and I think that that's been the issue with this Dolphins D, right? Like, yeah, they've been able to keep teams from scoring, but they're still out there and we're and that means that the offense is sitting on the on the bench, right? And we're not able to score. And I don't know how the hell we're going to score, Doug. I don't know how the hell we're going to score even when we're on the field. McDaniels has to draw something up, bro. I mean, I think Hundley Hundley gives you a good shot with your web. You have weapons all over the field, to be honest. So, And we have weapons, too. And we I don't know why the Titans haven't haven't scored at all. Because I think Calvin really is a a dynamic weapon. And we're not using him. And he, he gets the ball. And you can see he's explosive. but. He has. We haven't gave him opportunities or solid opportunities, or even committing to Pollard, right, and, and letting him see what he can do with twenty-two carries. Maybe not necessarily like twenty-five plus, but I like Pollard. This guy I like him a lot, a lot, dog. You know, give this guy eighteen, nineteen carries, see what he can do with that. But the moment he's ten, twelve, it's like, all right, see you later. And we have that yeah. same issue down here with HN. It's like, dog, we see this kid grinding, breaking tackles, like doing it all to to move the ball forward for the fins. And then it's like second half, that kid doesn't see the ball again. Um, you mentioned weapons, bro. I think that Tyreek Hill has been struggling the most out of everybody on the offense, right? Like uh, even Tua with his bad start, you know, Waddle really hasn't produced anything. Uh, Moster has been out. Like we haven't really got much from the tight end position. I think the one who's been suffering the most has been Ty- Tyreek Hill. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with how the season even started for him, right? With that crazy shit, him getting pulled yeah. over and put on the ground. Do you think that that shit is like, you know, carrying over for a guy of his caliber, or is just like he's gonna point at the quarterback and say, "Yo, this is the reason." No, I, I, I mean that is bad juju to start the season with the way all that went down. But I just think it's lack. I think it's just the offense not clicking on all cylinders, and if the offense, uh, it starts with him. To be honest, your offense starts yeah. and flies through him. I mean, you guys got to get him going, find ways to get him the ball. You guys, he barely had touches against the Seahawks. Only had five t- targets. And what, two catches, if anything? Get yeah, him on man, some like, jet sweeps, some something, something. Figure something out. Some screens. Even if it's something. But then they, even they're if probably it's expecting the screens. Yeah. But even if it's a reverse from the wide receiver, you know what I mean? Like, we got to do agree. something to get the ball into his hands, right? And yeah. I don't know if, like, if I saw him demanding the ball that much or even going to McDaniel and saying, like, yo, I need you to come out here and really focus on us, really try to get something going here. Uh, I need more targets. I'm beating these guys by five, six, seven, eight yards. That should be enough space for 
for Skyler or whoever to come back and, and, and throw it to me, you know? And I don't think I saw that type of Tyreek Hill on the sideline, you know, against Seattle. But now we're facing a do-or-die situation, you know what I mean? Um, and, and you're right about your defense. It's it's a formidable defense. Um, it's not a top three, top five defense, but on any given Sunday, these guys are going to go out there and give you a tough, hard-nosed football game, I think, right? I think our second. I think our secondary is nice. Who's some yes. of those guys on, uh, that, you, that you would highlight on the defense in the secondary? Mine, and some of those defensive lines. Yeah, man. I have Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill's kryptonite and Legere, <laughs> Sneed or whatever his first name is. And, you know, I, use, I like using that GIF in our group chat all the time. So <laughs> he starts with him. We have, we have on the other side, we have a, a woozy from the – he was in the Bengals last year. I don't know how to pronounce his last name either. But those are two guys that have been holding it down, bro. And we have, I think our secondary is, is ranked up there. We did get diced up yesterday by, I mean, last week by Malik Willis, but that starts with, with his mobility and coaching. That, from coach, I think LaFleur had him, had him rolling real good. And, but and you, don't think that, you don't think that he wanted to go back there and, like, you know, kind of stick I mean, it to I the told, a little bit? I mean, he, he said he didn't, but as a competitor, you do. I, I, I believe he did. I, I believe he walked out, I think it was in Tennessee, too, to make it worse. I'm not sure. But yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he. I'm sure that went felt good for him because we made him look terrible, bro. Two uh, a year ago, when he had to cover for for Tannehill, we made him. Our offensive play calling made him look real bad. And look at him last yeah. week. He looked. Um, he looked. He probably the top backup play in the league. Top five, even yeah. fantasy wise. I think you could have started him, and he would have done really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're yeah. totally right about that. I um, you mentioned Sneed, dog, and, and he had some comments earlier this week, right? He was like, man, you know, we're comfortable. You know, we got our, our players back. Everybody in the locker room is still focused on on winning. You know, they're not. They're, he's not really worried about matching up with Tyreek Hill. And when, why would he be, right? He has the upper yeah. hand right now. And obviously he's going into a matchup where he's definitely going to be at an advantage, right? With an inferior quarterback, right? Who, regardless yeah. of who we start, whether it's only Boyles or whatever, um, I think that yeah, is not too the same level. It's not Tua, right? It's not yeah, Tua. Exactly. Uh, you know, we share a common player that's going to be on the field on Monday, David Long, the third official, or junior, right? He's a, yeah, junior. Junior. He's a junior. He's a junior. He's a junior. He's a junior. Former um, tight end. Former tight end, you know what I mean? Um, Middle linebacker. He's nice. When we signed him, you know, I asked you, I was like, what do you think about him? You're like, oh, he's going to be solid. Um, but nothing spectacular. He's been really consistent this year for the Dolphins, and, and he's one of those guys like that he just – his nose finds the football somehow, some yeah. way. He's always involved in the tackle or part of the scrum. Um, is that what you guys enjoyed about him? And, and, and what do you hate facing about him? What's a, what about him do you hate facing? When, well, when he was in the Titans, I, I, I like to call him a B-plus player. He's not your superstar linebacker, but he's that consistent player that's always going to be there and make plays and be around the football, which is mm -hmm. what ultimately matters, right? Um. And that's that was his nick, just finding finding those holes, plugging those holes when he was in Tennessee. I mean, obviously he could have done better, always, right? There's always room for improvement, but I would have loved to keep him, to be honest. I, I would love for David Long to still be a middle linebacker for the Tennessee Titans. He looks like a good team oriented type guy, too. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like, all right, I'm a I'm a dolphin, I'm going all in yeah. on the dolphin. I'm a time, yeah. fuck it, I'm going all in on the time. You I know? Agree. I agree. He's and a sometimes team guy. If, yeah, and, and if sometimes you, if you're a B plus player, right, like that, that's the extra effort that's going to get you noticed. That's the extra yeah. effort that's going to get you those contracts and get you yeah. paid, right? Let me ask you yeah, this, though. I remember um, correctly, he did have a, a tough time staying healthy. I think he, he got hurt last week, right? Correct, correct, yeah. correct. That's so, one yeah. of his niches. That's one of his yeah. niches. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about your coach. Um, mm. We 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 personally had a conversation about it the other day, right? When we were ranking mm -hmm. coaches, real quick. What do you think? Obviously, you guys are zero three. The record can't speak for everything, right? Um, but what do you think that he's done well so far this year, right? That makes you say, "All right, we'll get it together by year two, right?" And by the end of this season, at least three games in, bro. I don't think. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't really think he's called. He's done anything that great. Mm -hmm. I, I had to be critical about him. I think he, he has room for improvement, too. Our first game, he only put up 17 points, and he took it. I don't think we scored in the second half, and he's our mm -hmm. play caller. So mm -hmm. 
So that's what blew us the game. We didn't score in the second half. We scored 17 first half points on a donut in the second half. Uh, play calling wise, he's our play caller, so he needs to dial something up, draw something up to to get us going. So I've heard him be critical about Will Levis, which I like. He threw him. He didn't throw him under the bus, but he told him he's a grown up. He should know better, and he needs to know. He needs to start knowing better because goddamn three, three, three weeks in a row. It's rough. It's rough. Let me yeah. ask you this: do you, Do you think that he would pull Levis mid game, or you think that you know if if Will Levis has a bad game, you obviously let him finish that out and say, "All right, you know what?" In the post game press conference. I'm going to say that this job is not open for a debate. You know what I mean? Or do you think he's the type of coach to be like, my bell, hey, come sit over here next to me on the bench. I got something to show you. I think Will Levis will have to have a really, really bad first half for him to get mm. pulled. I think Will okay. Levis is our guy. Okay. We have Mason so, Rudolph behind him, so I don't think Mason Rudolph gives us not much of a better chance. So I'll stick with Will Levis. Uh, he's, last year he showed me his explosiveness. He pushes the ball down the field. Which I like. It's exciting. He throw. He's not scared to throw the ball. He's not scared to fit it in tight windows. He has a strong arm. Stands tall in the pocket. Takes hits. So I'm I'm riding with Will Levis for at least the next couple. Of years, at least the end of this year. He's got to show me something okay. the second half of the season. That's fair. And so, That's and fair. so does Callahan. Even though we're in a rebuilding stage, but I think they they got a lot to prove. Well, you want we to got, see them put the. Go ahead, finish it. I think I think Ryan Ryan Carth on the GM built a nice team around a, a a decent team to to make a push. No, for sure, and and to compete in your division, right? Because yeah. you know, that right now that division, you know, we we talked about it, it's up for grabs. Jacksonville's not looking great. Indianapolis, well, and yeah. Anthony the only ones that scare me is great. CJ Stroud and the Texans. And, and the Texans, they're that's scary. probably the yeah. best team, right? They're, they're probably the best team because their quarterback is playing the best right yeah, now exactly. out of the four, right? Um, and if you had, if either one of those teams had more consistent play in their quarterback room, then, yeah, they'd probably be challenging Houston, right? Because um, yeah. we've seen Houston falter a little bit. But I think what you want to see there is, like, the building blocks, right? We have the building yeah. blocks. Let's keep building on it. Um, exactly. One thing I, want, I wanted to say about Levis, I think that, you know, he, in my opinion, right, the way that I see him, he's like a much more talented Tebow, right? A kid who's all about football, all about great, really focused on 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 being there for his teammates, trying to make the right play, trying to make the right read, doing anything, whatever it takes to win the game and doing whatever that takes. And I think that's what gets him in trouble sometimes, right? He Where he tries yeah. to do a little bit too much, right? I, and it ends up costing him a little bit more. But I think he has that football leadership mentality and i think the guys in the locker room really believe him or believe in him right when, when it comes to his talents i agree i think the team is behind levis i've heard a bunch of them say make comments that that's their quarterback and i wouldn't want to play with mason rudolph either to be honest <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure um you're gonna be there monday night dog live with the fam and the boy yeah. we're gonna try to get the squad out there uh, what's one thing you're looking for? Two things. Give me two things that you're looking forward to Monday night aside the the chilling, right? That's that's what we no. do normally, but yeah. That nah. on the field, what are you looking for on the field? First of all, we gotta get the dub. We gotta get a win <laughs> so I can talk shit. And you know, you know, it's hard. It, you you France. We have some friends that are fans that make it hard to root for the Dolphins. So, for sure. And you're a home so, team guy. You're a supporter. You're a home, yeah. you're a home team supporter. Not but, a hater. But yeah, well, first we gotta get the dub, and second, I want to see Calvin really blow up, bro. I want to mm. see Calvin really make some plays. I want to see him be as explosive as I think he could be. But yeah, that that would be. What don't thing. What don't you want to see from the Dolphins, right? What are you hoping that the Dolphins do not do Monday night? I don't. Uh, we gotta hold Tyreek down. Don't let mm. Tyreek get get above you. Keep a lid on him. That'll be the one thing. I think for for us, like what I what I'm really looking forward to seeing the most is like the evolution of McDaniel's, right? Like like I kind of did in the preview of the season, where he can make an adjustment on how this team is ran. Right? We don't have the quarterback to throw the ball in the system that we like to run. Cool. Plan B. What's Plan B? Let's use the running game and, and feed the ball to H and feed the ball to fucking Wilson to feed the ball to Jalen Wright, like. Just give those guys carries, and at least we control a lot of the clock that way, right? Maybe we don't put up the 35, 40-something points, but whatever. We're, we're controlling the game. We're controlling the pace, right? 
Yeah. Um, and then on, and on the defensive side, don't give up the big play because that shit, we're so, so suspect when it comes to that, right? Like Metcalf, broken play, touchdown. Big, yeah. uh, against Buffalo, big plays on the field, touchdown. And then Multiple like, Jackson, the same shit. Multiple big plays, touchdown. It's like, fuck, man. Like, don't give up the big play. If they break you down and dr- make you drive for 15 minutes, okay, cool. I can I can have that. But don't give me no uh, confusion in coverage yeah. and one guy's wide open. No 40-yard, 50-yard plays for touchdowns. I don't yeah, need to see that, that dog. Not a, not again. No offense, dog, but not against this quarterback, dog. Not against this quarterback, right? Yeah. Because we he hasn't been consistent doing that. So for us to give that up against Levis is like you guys giving that up against Skyler. You would be so pissed, dog. I mean, we gave it. We we didn't give up those big plays against Caleb, but Will Levis gave the game away to Caleb Williams. But, but in my opinion, right now, Caleb Williams is probably better than Skyler Thompson, right? Oh yeah, I agree. There you I go. He's got right? more potential than Skyler Thompson. Way more potential, probably better arm, better accuracy, yeah. all that shit. You know what I mean? Um, number one drafter for a reason. But yeah, yeah. man, it's, it, Monday night's gonna be fun, dog. I'm looking forward to it, dog. Yeah, Obviously, I hope good. you guys don't win. Um, I brought out the lucky flag. I had it in the okay. box for three. What's funny, dog? I gotta tell you, some guy, real quick about this flag, dog. So last year it worked, right? We won a lot of games. I ended up putting it away for the playoffs because I was gonna take it somewhere. Oh. I didn't take it. We got smoked. Le- lesson learned. Game one. Watching the game at Joel's house, so I take my flag. All good. We win. Break the flag out for the show. We're oh, good. shit. So this is a trend with right? the flag. We lose the next two games because I put the flag back away in the safe spot. And I'm like, dog, why are we getting smoked? And then today I was like, you know what? I need to bring the prop back out. The flag is back, baby. We're going to win this game for sure. Put it back in the box. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Nah, man. I'm going to leave it out right there. I'm not going to take it Monday night. Um, I'm gonna leave it right here, dog. That way, you know, in case we do lose, it's at least I know I won't destroy it in, in a rage of a rage of anger, dog. But Jay, man, it's been so dope to do this with you, dog. Yeah, Thank you so much for doing cool. this for real, dog. You don't know what this means okay. to me, man. Um, and I can't wait to chill with y'all, dog, and see what the game yeah. is like, bro. And let's do it. Let's go talk some shit and winner gets bragging rights for the year. Gets bragging rights for the year, for dog. Whole year, for sure, so. Dog. For a whole year, dog. That's going to be on the line, man. I appreciate yeah. you joining us on Sports with hey. So dog. That's, that's course, Jay man. right I there. Love. That's Sports with So So fam right there. Let's do it. Let's do it, dog. See you Monday, baby. I'm Let's glad go. being here. Let's go. That's Jay right there. Julio Garcia, dope boy extraordinaire, big time Titans fan. And uh, he's been a Titans fan since day one. So I couldn't have asked anybody else come out here and talk to them Dolphins and Titans football with y'all we hope you guys enjoying the show make sure you're hitting that like comment and subscribe button let us know how we're doing most importantly turn on those notifications that way you guys get notified when we drop hits like this till next time peace